Okay, we're back here live at Oracle Open World in San Francisco, California. This is theCUBE, our flagship program about the events of Trek and Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined with uh, analyst from Wikibon.org, Jeff Kelly. We're here with Manan Goyal, Senior Director of Product Marketing at Teradata, Aster Teradata. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank so you. obviously big data is going to be a big part of the Red Stack and the Open Stack uh, and the open source community. Uh, I want to get your take on, uh, on what, what's going on at Oracle. First, your impressions of the show. Obviously the keynote is always the best. Uh, we'd love to watch the live stream and also the Twitter stream. Um, what's your take so far around what Oracle's doing with respect to the middleware and then you know, above the engineered systems around the big data opportunity. Right, so it's, uh, this show is, you know, as you know, the biggest show in the tech industry. You know, so it's always exciting to be here. Uh, we are here as Teradata, you know, we're participating. We also have Astro presence here. Uh, you know, we bring a very different perspective from oracles around, uh, around big data and discovery and analytics. So we'll be talking about that, uh, that throughout the show and uh, on, this, on this. Jeff, I want to get your perspective on the big data angle because obviously the, uh, the angle on big data has always been, hey, we enable you, purpose-built systems, engineered systems from Oracle. Uh, what's your take as an analyst in here uh, with the big data story? What's, what, what's, is it, is it kind of like ho-hum? Is it off the charts? What's, mm -hmm. your, what's, your, what's the sentiment from your well, perspective? Yeah, well I think Oracle is clearly saying, look, big data drives a lot of business value if you can actually leverage it and use it. And part of the challenge we're seeing out there with practitioners is, um, you know, it's very difficult to get, uh, for instance, a Hadoop cluster up and running optimally, to start building applications on top of it, uh, to do advanced analytics on it, the data scientists might find some insights, you want to then productionize that. So that's not an easy thing to do and to integrate and to actually get everything running optimally. So Oracle's uh, really value proposition, their message is, look, we're going to take all that complexity out of the equation for you. We've got engineered systems, we've got the hardware, the software, drop it into your data center and start doing some of the, the, the analytics uh, sooner. It's really going to drive business value. Now, that comes with a price, however. Um, so one of the real benefits, of course, of the, uh, the big data open source approach is that you've got commodity machines, you've got open source, sometimes free software, um, and you can do it at a much less uh, expensive price point than you can for a traditional you know, Oracle box. Um, that obviously, is that gets taken out of the equation if you go with Oracle's exit data or uh, the big data appliance, et cetera. So, you know, but what, what Oracle is saying is, look, yes, you could do it cheaper, but we can make sure it's up and running. We take away some of that risk. Uh, we integrate it with our other uh, database systems, our applications that you're already running uh, the rest of your organization with. Uh, so it's a fairly compelling uh, value proposition, a fairly compelling argument. Um, you know, flies in the face of what we're seeing in the open source world. But nevertheless, uh, you know, I think Oracle's going to have some success with their install base. Oracle's you know, ubiquitous in the enterprise. So you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, you know, of course, another player that gets talked about a lot is, is of course, Teradata. Um, and on, you're from Teradata, from Aster, uh, mm -hmm. an acquisition a couple years back around bringing in the Aster SQL MapReduce platform yeah. to kind of complement some of the data warehousing uh, a strength that obviously the Teradata has. Um, so tell us a little bit about Tell us a bit about where MapReduce, uh, excuse me, where Aster fits into the Teradata uh, story, if you will, around big data. Um, sure. You know, there was a couple announcements earlier this year, the uh, TIM, the uh, um, Intelligent Memory uh, Platform, there was an announcement around your Hadoop portfolio. Mm -hmm. Where exactly does Aster fit in? Okay, so uh, Jeff, Aster is a discovery platform. So what we mean by that is, you know, uh, Aster empowers our customers to quickly bring in diverse data sets, you know, that data from transactional sources, uh, you know, newer forms of data from web logs, clickstream data, uh, machine logs, sensor data, and analyze that using diverse analytic methods and techniques. So what Aster does really well is, you know, uh, it enables our customers to look at that data through uh, multiple lenses, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. so a lens of SQL, a lens of MapReduce, a lens of uh, graph or machine learning, and statistics, all in an integrated fashion and del 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 delivers much, uh, much richer and powerful insights from that. So you mentioned uh, you know, the, the challenges around getting value from big data. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, big data has a lot of value in it, but getting value is extremely difficult with you know, the technologies that are out in the market today. Mm -hmm. So that's where you know, uh, uh, at Aster, our perspective is we are trying to make uh, discovery and 
finding these insights in big data really easy for the customers. Mm -hmm. So one one way we are doing that is you know uh, at Aster we have standardized around a unified SQL interface mm -hmm. as a uh, interface for. Uh, uh, customers to work with all these different analytic engines, if you will. Mm -hmm. So in our case, in on our Astro platform, for SQL, for MapReduce, for Graph, uh, SQL is a unified interface through which you know all of those capabilities are exposed. Plus, we also provide you know pre-built functions, a rich library of AD plus pre-built functions, mm -hmm. which really make it easy for our customers to you know, explore big data and get value out of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, at Aster, we are all about making it easy for customers to do big data discovery and exploration. Mm -hmm. And we are also about uh, combining all these different uh, analytic techniques to deliver much richer and powerful insights. So just mm -hmm. to give you an example, you know, um, a customer of ours, they, they had, uh, and they were using statistical techniques to predict mm -hmm. customer churn, mm -hmm. and they were getting some, uh, you know, some uh, churn left from their models. But we brought the customer brought in Aster. They started looking at their data in a different way. You know, looking at customer behavior, customer experiences, mm -hmm. customer mm -hmm. journey, and they were able to improve the yield of their churn models by 25%. Mm -hmm. So just by combining, you know, two different analytic techniques like SQL. Uh, path pattern and statistics, they were able to get much mm -hmm. more richer and powerful insights. And that's what Astro is all about. So, so really you're taking an approach where it sounds like trying to enable the analyst to do the type of analysis he or she wants to do and whatever whatever approach is, is best for that particular use case. So you mentioned kind of you know the SQL interface, the SQL kind of as being the, the door into some of the type of analytics that, that analysts want to do. And we hear a lot about uh, bringing SQL to Hadoop for example, from Cloud Air and their Impala engine, uh, Hortonworks the, with their Hive, the Stinger Initiative and others. So is that, is, is, is really, is that what Aster, is Aster's play in that space? Is that essentially your approach to making big data accessible to, to analysts and other business users? Uh, am I understanding that right? Yes, yeah, so we do have a solution, you know, uh, a solution that we call SQL Edge mm -hmm. around, you know, connecting to uh, Hadoop. You know, we support the common Hadoop distributions and you can run SQL queries on top of Hadoop. But our solution, uh, our discovery solution and our platform is much more advanced, you know, just then, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, just from uh, providing basic SQL capabilities. A mm -hmm. you know, couple of things that we are doing is, we are taking these you know, capabilities like MapReduce, like graph processing, uh, like machine learning, that are these newer technologies, and really making them the first class citizen on our platform, mm -hmm. and providing this true integration. So from an analyst perspective, it, what it means is that you know, uh, analyst, you know, using a plain, easy, open standards language like SQL, would be able to write one single SQL query, mm -hmm. which may include a MapReduce function in it, which may include a graph function in it, which may include a, a simple SQL statistical function in it, and and you know, just by uh, blending these uh, ensemble of analytic techniques together, they can mm -hmm. you know much uh, much easily, much more effectively analyze the data and get insights out of that. Mm -hmm. So so our approach is much more of a, a, a strongly integrated approach as opposed to you know. Uh, as opposed to what some of our competitors are doing where they're making things work in more of a coexistence model. Mm -hmm. you know, they're more focusing around the coexisting model, but still you need you know, like different skill sets, different solutions, whereas we are going with more of an integrated approach with a unified SQL interface and a single query language mm -hmm. and out of the box functionality. Uh, Jeff, I want to get your perspective. One, obviously Hortonworks and Cloudera both are, are the, the players in the, in the Hadoop you know, Hadoop equals Hortonworks, Hadoop <coughs> equals Cloudera. In the mind of the world, that is essentially the open source uh, philosophy. You guys have, these guys have a relationship with uh, Hortonworks. Um, you got Intel out there, you got their own distribution. There's all kinds of discussion around that. I want to get your take on, how, does that world want a collision with the Oracle world, or the Oracle world looking at this like, hey, we got Cloudera. I mean, what, how is Oracle dealing with the massive growth of, of, uh, uh, of open source and big data? I'll see. Scale out, open source versus Oracle, scale out, right. purpose built. Well, you know, they're trying to co-opt the trend as they've done kind of with cloud, right? So you heard in the keynote this morning, actual Clutter actually got a mention uh, of being, you know, the Hadoop distribution integrated into uh, cloud, uh, sorry, Oracle's big data plan. So I think what, I mean, from my perspective, and it's a little cynical, I'll, I'll admit, 
But you know, for, for more, I think Oracle probably has the most to lose potentially from the open source big data approach. It's really antithetical to what Oracle does, which Oracle is about proprietary scale up expensive integrated systems where the open source big data world is about um, you know, commodity machines, free software, scale out. Uh, it's really quite different and it really would uh, potentially disrupt Oracle's business model. Now Oracle's not going anywhere anytime soon, I don't mean to suggest that. But I think Oracle understands that they've got to start adapting a little bit more to this world, um, which is why they brought in Cloudera. Um, you know, they, well, I think last year, at last year's open world, it was more just a, a lot, more, more just kind of messaging, a little bit of lip service around uh, Hadoop and NoSQL. They're talking a little bit about it more. They've added some more functionality and some more connections between their uh, different systems. So they are seem to be seems to me they're taking it seriously. But ultimately, if you know, if mm -hmm. as an enterprise, I can get a lot of the functionality and a lot of these the new big data analytic capabilities from whether it's Astro Data or others uh, at a much lower price point than Oracle's offering me in a very expensive exit data box, you know, that's something I got to take seriously. Now certainly Oracle adds some value of their own, like I mentioned at the top of the segment. Um, you know, they de-risk to a certain extent big data deployments. You don't have to worry about doing that integration work yourself, but it's expensive. Well, we'll have Mike Olson on from Cloud Air tomorrow at four o'clock. Also, Max Shearson, the president of um, MongoDB, both guys in the database world, obviously in the whole open source community is going great. Uh, and then I want to ask you a question back to Astro Data and Teradata. Um, what is your approach? What are you guys doing uh, with the Hortonworks? Give us the update on the relationship with Hortonworks and how does that all fit in with your business? Absolutely, so first of all, you know, like I would like to second what Jeff was saying, you know, like, uh, you look at Oracle, you look at Teradata, you know, uh, uh, the Hadoop guys would want you to believe that, you know, that is the next uh, uh, data management platform, and then, you know, some of these technologies like, you know, Oracle or Teradata are going to go away, but that's not what we are seeing in our customer base. What we are seeing uh, in our customer base is, you know, customers will continue to use, you know, Teradata as a data warehouse platform, but then they are then they are adding, you know, these additional technologies like Aster, like Hadoop, for workload specific uh, applications within their uh, platform, within their analytic uh, infrastructure. So what we are seeing is, you know, uh, we are going to market with. Uh, with Teradata as uh, a solution, you know, we're pitching uh, the unified data architecture to our customers. Unified data architecture includes uh, Teradata's data warehouse, it includes the Astro Discovery platform, and it also includes uh, Hortonworks uh, Hadoop distribution. And we see all of these technologies having, you know, specific roles within the unified data architecture. So these, uh, you know, Hadoop, uh, uh, Hadoop from Hortonworks is a great data landing area, a data data lake sort of a thing. Aster is primarily around discovery, finding insights or nuggets in this big data. And then finally when you operationalize or productize these insights, that's where Teradata comes in. So we are seeing you know, these three technologies working really closely together and you know, providing customers with workload specific processing applications at the right economics and the, mm -hmm. for the right data, data and platform. Jeff, what's your take on that? Well, you know, I think, uh, I agree that you know the idea that Hadoop is a cure-all is is pretty much you know been uh, is not is not the case. I mean, I think Hadoop has its place and it's a very uh, important foundational technology. I think in a big data platform, um, it, it really allows and really that's the technology that kind of ticked off the whole big data movement. Uh, really, because it allowed you, it really just took the storage uh, capabilities and just expanded them uh, significantly because of the low cost of storage, um, and you can do a lot more processing on that data. Uh, kind of eliminates the idea of sampling. Uh, you can uh, look at all your data depending on uh, the use case. Uh, but I agree, there's different use cases, there's different tools for each use case, and you've got to use the right tool for the right use case. I think for the enterprise, the key is identifying which tool is right for which use case, and then integrating those into a cohesive platform that allows you to not just get insights, but then operationalize those. And then to uh, close the loop, a feedback loop, where uh, you've got some analytics, you've got some applications that are leveraging those analytics, and then feed that back into the system to see what's working, what's not working, and continue to iterate. Um, so that integration work, I think, is really important uh, inside the enterprise. Um, and you know, we're still very early in this big data world, still a lot of just experimentation going on, especially with, when you think about the Hadoop world. Um, so we're not seeing a lot of enterprises get to that point where you've really got a closed loop system. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how that uh, happens over the next five to 10 years and how companies like Teradata, how, how companies like Oracle actually help their customers make that happen. And it's the vendors that actually um, have a vision around that, I think, that's going to be important uh, over the next decade. Um, 
Uh, Manana, I would like to talk a little bit more about your, uh, really how, how the Aster business specifically is going. Um, you know, you talked a little bit about how you're integrated into the larger Teradata uh, platform, uh, unified uh, platform. Um, so tell us a little bit about the strategy in terms of uh, Aster as a standalone platform. Are you, are you seeing a lot of, are you seeing more traction as Aster being brought into Teradata deals? Or is there still a lot of demand for Aster as kind of a standalone platform in heterogeneous environments? Maybe there's no Teradata in those environments. Maybe there's Oracle or IBM or whoever. So, uh, Jeff, I would say we are seeing both of those trends, you know, like there's certainly a role for Aster uh, within the unified data architecture in conjunction with the Teradata data warehouse mm -hmm. to do, you know, to do more uh, analytics and discovery around big data, these newer data mm -hmm. sources. But then there is also as a standalone solution, you know, we're seeing really interesting use cases being developed around Aster, primarily around discovery, you know. Uh, what Aster is enabling customers to do is to quickly bring in data from these diverse data sets, mm -hmm. you know, like your transactional data, like web clickstream data, and analyze through analyze that data through multiple analytic engines like you know SQL, MapReduce, mm -hmm. Graph, all in an integrated fashion. And from a use case perspective, you know, like customers are able to find really interesting patterns around customer behavior. Mm -hmm. They are able to you know better manage customer experience. They are using Aster for you know customer churn. That's a big use case for us. Mm -hmm. uh, fraud detection, uh, you know identifying and cutting down waste and those kind of things. So we are seeing, you know, um, globally we are seeing uh, really interesting use cases of uh, big data analytics and discovery emerging across different industry segments, different verticals, and seeing a lot of traction around Aster and with UD and Teradata for that, in that space. So just one last question for me, I'd love you to tell us what you've got kind of coming up going forward, uh, to the extent that you can, I know sometimes these are closely held secrets, but uh, what's next, what can we expect to see from Teradata generally, but Aster in particular? Yeah, so uh, uh, Jeff, we are getting ready to make a new product announcement here in uh, the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a new, uh, we have a launch of uh, Aster Discovery Platform coming up. Uh, this to us is uh, a really fascinating and major release. You know, we, this is the next generation discovery platform, if you will. So you know, when we talk to customers, they tell us that you know these diverse data sources, these diverse analytic engines are really important to them. Mm -hmm. So that's where you know this new release of Aster Discovery Platform mm -hmm. when will bring in new analytic engines, new data stores, and also make these engines work really well uh, in an integrated fashion and through mm -hmm. a common user interface like SQL together. Mm -hmm. So that'll enable our customers to, uh, to gain even much more richer, powerful insights and make better discoveries and you know, use those insights to uh, innovate and optimize their business processes. All right, well fantastic, we okay, look forward to that. Okay, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break, I'm John Furrier, this is our flagship program. We'll be right back, live in San Francisco for Oracle Open World 2013, we'll be right back. <laughs>